data type we have is the following. We have objects. Objects are at first are a little complicated to grasp, but in sh brief, it's a in it, they're sort of like data types with multiple attributes. So data to a set of data, it could be anything really. So we're gonna call this is what an object looks like in JavaScript. So we're gonna call call it var o let's call it obj for object, and we're gonna have oh sorry it, they're starting off they're started off with curly braces like that. And then inside are the attributes. So the object is called obj, so it kind of takes a variable, and whatever is inside are the attributes. So we have a we tend to have a name of the attribute called f name, and the equals a sort of value. Each attribute of the object is separated by commas. This is an oversimplification of an object. Objects can have pretty much anything in them because JavaScript is based off of objects itself. You'll see later on strings are objects, boolean is an object. They're all everything's pretty much objects in JavaScript, but we'll talk about that later. Right now, this is just oversimplification of an example. It just shows you the simple example. So Tom Jones, and we're gonna say comma city equals Las Vegas. You can see in in Sublime Text it actually gives you color coding, which is really nice. And it's really nice of them because it's easy to read. You know, attributes are one color and the values of them are another color. And then we're going to have a, I don't know how old is Tom Jones. Uh, let's call, let's say 80. So you can have pretty much any values in here. We tend to add, we tend to make objects end with a, um, with a semicolon right there because uh, it's, it makes it a lot easier. Just trust me, semicolons make things a lot easier to read. So objects are declared, just to recap, are declared with curly braces and attributes are separated by commas. Attribute names go first, equals a sort of value, could be anything really. And that's that. There are other, I think they're, actually, I think they're called properties. They're called attributes or properties, whichever one. I'll use those interchangeably. So that's an object. And if we do type of obj, let's see what we get. And you get process L on missing after property ID. Oh, that's because I did this wrong. I'm thinking of another language. I'm thinking of um, I'm thinking of uh, other program, another programming language. So you basically, sorry about that, guys. So basically, you have a name of a property with semicolon, then the attribute followed by the next attribute, and then and so on. So they're not color coded, like as I, as I said, they should be. It's okay, so they should not be. In, uh, yep, that's fine, and then age should be. So we don't use assignment, we use semicolons. I'm so sorry, guys. We use semicolons. Yep, there we go, the, the, the numbers should be in color and not, and let's check if that's okay. Yep, there we go. So there you go, it's an object. So now we made our own object. Objects, like I said, denoted with these, have attributes separated by commas, the name of the attribute in, in a string, semicolon, whatever value, it could be boolean, it could be digit, it could be a digit, I mean a number, it could be a string, it could even be another object with a, or a function, which we'll talk about in another its own chapter. Okay, so that's an object. The next type, I should have wrote it up here, so just uh, so that was objects. The next one we have is arrays. So arrays look like this. Arrays, let's say, we'll store it to a variable. You don't have to, let's call ARR. This is going to be, actually, let's make it something more comprehensive. So we're gonna say names equals, arrays are denoted with square brackets. And we'll talk about this later, but arrays are also objects which are, is kind of confusing, but they're actually kind of their own type, I think. So John, let's say Susie and Tom. So those are all items inside an array. Arrays, arrays are sets of items, data or items, denoted with the square brackets. Each item is separated by call, or call, commas. There are other called items or elements, whichever you'd like to call them. So 
Arrays are identified by elements, which we'll talk about in later tutorials. So like you'll call Tom by using names, square brackets with the first index. So arrays go by or match by index of so 0, 1, 2. Arrays are zero inclusive with their indexes. So we're going to call the type of array names. Save that. Go to Firefox. And it's also an object as you see. Because like I said, JavaScript is based on objects, but this is an array. Anyway, moving on, we also have another type called dates. Um, it, they basically go like this. So I also I think I said there's five types. That's because um, well every I, there's going to be more right now, but. Uh, Let's call this var d equals date, and we're gonna say we're gonna say d capital lowercase d, and you'll see date. There's like some of them that they're sort of like intertwined or based on another object. We'll see later on, but I'm just showing you all the kinds of types that we have. So like. Um, functions you'll see are objects, arrays are objects, and objects are objects, which is it sounds kind of confusing, but like I said, JavaScript is based on objects, and date is a sort of its own can be sort of considered its own sort of thing. So you'll see here, if I hold the mouse on my Sublime Text, it'll show us what kind of things we have. It's an object, but it's also returns a, this object itself returns a string, so that's why it gave me string, which is type D. It's a little confusing, but we'll have, we'll explain all these in their own chapters, so don't worry. And now we're going to make a function. So let's say function. Let's call it f. Just call it f. Simple as that. f fresh, and it's a function. But you'll you'll also see that function function is derived from the object type. It's a little confusing, but just consider functions its own types for now. We'll see how they're related to objects later on. So to recap, we've had so we've had uh, we've had strings, we've had numbers, we've had boolean, we've had objects, and now we had functions. And then there's like sort of subcategories of like there's dates, which are also return strings, and so on. So and like an array is also an object. So let me write that here to recap. So arrays, objects, and yep, functions, booleans, strings. We also have dates in there, which dates are a little different. They have their own attributes, or actually objects themselves. And sorry, I keep repeating it, and just sorry, I, I maybe I shouldn't. Anyway, so but this particular method returned method also function sort of initial constructor returned a. I'll explain these all later on. Just this is getting give you a taste of what's in store. So we're gonna have treat we're gonna have dates in this own section. So don't worry about that. And function was its own type. We'll talk about that later. And the last thing we have is undefined. So undefined is actually considered its own sort of subtype or its own type itself. So let's type in var on def. So it's undefined, right? And we're going to say console log type of on def def and it'll bring back its own type so that's its own type so why did I just show that well what if we had a case where we had because in JavaScript null is also a value like in other programming languages so we have two sort of values that don't, are empty so we have null and we have undefined this means so we have two separate values Null is a little different. It's more of a literal value. See, it's in purple, but undefined itself. Let's write undefined. It's also oh, actually got also purple here. It's a little different. They're they're the same value, but they're not the same type. Um, I'll get back to you what they both mean, but they usually use interchangeably. But in some situations, they can't be used interchangeably because of this fact so let's say null 
three equal operators, which we'll talk about later in the next sections, are just uh, basically um, compares the type as well. So if we wanted to produce a Boolean value, you get false. This is a comparison operator, which returns a Boolean value true or false based on the left and the comparing left and right operands. This three equals means it checks the value. So equals equals is checking whether they're both equal to each other. That's true. But if we have three of them, it's false. That's because maybe in some systems null will be used and undefined or undefined will be used. So you always you should check sometimes if they're both null and undefined. Usually in JavaScript we use undefined, but sometimes you might see null as well. In this section, we're going to show you how to work with type conversion in JavaScript. So if you're not familiar with what type conversion is, that is basically that means that um we're take converting a piece of data of one type to another. So like from a number to an inter, a number to a um, string. But first before doing that, I would say that JavaScript often converts types automatically. So let's see that in the following situation. JavaScript is very cool about things and it'll do something like this. So Okay, what I did here, I'm adding a number with the string value 5. So you might think this maybe this will be 9 because JavaScript will automatically convert 5 to a number. Or this will be converted to like 2 plus so the string 2 plus string 2 plus string 5 equals 255. But this will actually return the following. So let's see that. Semicolon open our index page and look at our console f12 that's f11 f12 45 so what this did it added these two numbers as integers and added it to the string 5 so it concatenated that's what adding to strings is called so it added four the character 4 to the character 5 and made 45 and not 9 as we would want it to be so I mean you wouldn't really do this really but sometimes if you might have an input that's in a string and another input that's an integer and you have to do something with them one side will be treated as a string actually the whole result both sides will be treated as strings and you will get weird results so JavaScript is lenient but in this case can be kind of tricky so you got to be careful when working with different data types and that's where type conversion comes in so we have basically predefined functions in JavaScript that allow us to convert data types properly. So the first type we're going to convert to is string. So we have, let's say var test equals string. So you have, this is called the constructor of the object string. String can be also an object. This pretty much converts anything to a string. The, in the argument you have, we'll talk about constructors later on. If I just said, I said constructor, we'll talk about those later on. Now string is an object. Don't worry about that right now. But I'm saying is this is how you can also convert a string. You can have string inside parentheses, whatever value you need. So when you convert that, you get an orange, you get the character two. You can do that with anything true, any Boolean. You get the, the, the string true. So if I wrote true here, the literal value true, that's a Boolean. It's also, it's actually, is that red? Yeah, it's in red. So if I did type of here, type of, it's Boolean, but if I did type of test, which is the string form of Boolean, it'll, of that true, it'll be, it'll be string. So that's one way to type of doing string. You can also do the following. You can use another method. So let's say var, let's call this num equals 72. And then we're going to say, instead of, you can also call a variable in here like num, but we won't have to demonstrate that. All right, so you can do num, you call the variable, and you write a dot. So basically, this is treating, what this is, we'll explain this later in the chapter on objects, this is treating the variable as an object itself, because everything is an object in JavaScript, because JavaScript is based on objects itself, themselves. But anyway, every object has built-in functions, which we'll see later on in this, tutorial, in this series. But anyway, you're calling the function to string to say, okay, give me this number, whatever's here, and turn it into a string for me. 
So we're going to test that and see if it worked. Num. And you get, oops, I didn't, I did, it was supposed to be test. See, number is actually a number. Test, on the, on the other hand, is the string version of that number. So you got string. So that's how you convert strings. You can also convert to Booleans as well. So let's say num equals zero. And num is then going to be, so you take in, you do Boolean. So this is called a constructor. It's basically, what that is in short is basically we're creating a new object of this type, of a Boolean type, and then saying whatever values and parameters it has. We'll talk about those later on. I keep saying that, so don't worry. But the general thing is, this is how you convert a number integer to a Boolean. So we're saying, okay, this number zero is going to become a Boolean now. And that Boolean is returned. And let's see what value we get. So if it's zero, we get false. However, if we make it one, it returns true. And if we could be any other number, 122, it becomes true. So any number that isn't zero will return true if it's converted to Boolean and any number that, and zero will return false if it's converted to Boolean. So you should keep that in mind. It's a good trick. It's a good trick to know when you work with conditional statements, which we'll talk about in another chapter. So just keep that in mind. All right. So now the last thing we have is converting to a number. So it's a little different this time. Strings, when you're converting to string, you could pretty much have anything there because anything can be, a, as long as it's in the character range. So like a number can be converted to a string, a true or false can be converted to a string, and pretty much anything can be converted to a string in JavaScript. But when we wanted to convert to a number, it's well, there's a little more criteria to follow. So let's, let's, um, let's start over with all this. Okay, we're going to have three variables now. We're going to have uh, var pi equals 3.14 comma we're gonna have um, SPC for space it's gonna be empty and then we're gonna have one three so number with a lot of spaces so we're gonna have what, is, what are we gonna call this we're just calling n I guess so we're gonna have one three three seven so we're going to see what we get from this. So we're going to say console log. So in console log, we can display pretty much anything and it'll be turned as a string. So let's say pi, um, we're going to say number. So we're, this is a constructor of number, see value any. So pi, pi will be converted to a number, 3.14 properly. So what I did here is that in the console log, I just called what we were doing before, instead of calling it, storing it into a variable and calling the variable, I did it directly. You don't, you shouldn't do it like this directly. Sometimes, if the if it's not something so simple, you should often apply it to a sign it to a variable first and then call it in the console log or wherever because it's a lot easier. It looks a lot prettier to look at. But anyway, I'm just this is just for testing purposes. All right, moving on. So let's do space. We're gonna see space, and we got zero. So empty was zero. When you have something empty, so let's do it like that. So when it's empty, you get zero. However, what if we add something like this? Will it do one? Will it return one thousand three hundred thirty-seven? Will it ignore the spaces? Well, let's find out. You get nan. What nan is means not a number. It's like the number type of something that isn't a registerable number. So it's not a double. It's not a double floating point number. It's not a single float pointing number. It's not a decimal number. It's not a sign to like. It's not anything so small. It's just nan. Nan is the sort of value reserved in the numbers type for anything that is an invalid number. All right, so that's that. We have some other, so like to conclude, we have some other conversion functions or methods as they're sometimes called that we'll be discussing in later chapters when we work with some stuff like dates and math and so on. So. We won't need to worry about those right now. We just did some basic type conversion. And with that, we conclude this tutorial.